In this final part of the video tutorial, I want to recap on what we did to create this sequence of our demo application and in particular see how little we had to write. Um, there's just one uh, set of tricks uh, that this application demonstrates that I'd also like to um, show you. I've mentioned them in passing a few times, but I wanted to look at it in a little bit more detail in this last section. That's the fact that the YUI custom tags generate code that at runtime ensures two things. Firstly, that the correct YUI JS and CSS files are loaded just in time into the browser. And that happens uh, each time a YUI widget is delivered into the browser with, by a fragment. And it also ensures that those files are only loaded once. Um, those of you who have used YUI know that various widgets require various JS and CSS uh, library files and it's a kind of overlapping set so um, you know each time you you bring in a new um, widget you might have some of the JavaScript and CSS files loaded but you'll need some more uh, well the, the EWD YUI custom tags keep track of that automatically the other thing that happens is that um, when a fragment is brought in and it replaces the inner HTML of a particular tag, any YUI widget objects that were in that inner HTML that's about to be replaced, um, those YUI widget objects get uh, destroyed automatically. So let's watch this, uh, these two things in action. So I'll restart this application from the top. And you'll see down here in the Firebug trace that it's already loaded a variety of JS and CSS files. And I didn't have to ask for that to happen. That, that, that'll just happen automatically by virtue of me using these EWD YUI custom tags. So that saves me quite a lot of work and heartache to begin with. I'll know that all the right libraries are loaded just in time. So if I now log in, Of course, what happens here is that the login panel disappears and that the, the main menu is now changed. Look down here and see what's happened. Here it's removed the menu and it's removed the login panel. Um, and that all happened automatically. If we now bring up the library panel, which introduces our um, tab view widgets, then down here you'll see here's tabview.css tabview min.js has been brought in because it's spotted that they hadn't been loaded. All the others that, that are required by the tab view are already there so they don't get loaded again. So this just happens once, very efficient, and just happens as and when they're needed. Um, and if we now run the query, and now we brought in the data table, and again here you see all the data table and paginator JS and CSS files and so on have, have been pulled in. And then if we go up here and we click the About panel, then up comes our About panel and look down here, all of these guys have been deleted automatically. Now this is the kind of thing that left uh, to a programmer to implement manually would inevitably get done incompletely or wrongly somewhere along the line particularly in a very large application. And even if the initial production version was perfect, downstream maintenance and modification of the application will, will almost inevitably break something because some widget got, was failed, you know, you know, didn't get destroyed correctly at the right time. Uh, with EWD's custom tags, it all happens automatically and it's, it's guaranteed. Um, so let's have a look then at the um, how little we actually had to write in this application again. You've probably realized that by now from going through the videos, but let's just, just very quickly recap. Um, the, the, the basic statistics, I think, say it all. The EWD files, um, here they are. These are the ones that make up the application. You can see how few uh, there are. It's a total of 134 lines of simple HTML and XML in those. And the, um, the Python library module <coughs> um, it's a mere 78 lines of code and yet this is a pretty complex um, uh, user interface that we've, we've built, albeit a relatively short sequence. 
So let's just very quickly run through these these pages. Index.ewd. Um, this just creates the the container page. Very simple, just a simple table here <coughs> that establishes the um, the target IDs and pulls in the initial menu and the login panel. So initial menu. Very simple, just a, a, an instance of a, a menu bar, and all the work is done by the prepaid script in the, in the uh, Python module. Login panel, very simple fragment with a, a form inside a dialog. It asks for the username and password. <coughs> and here all the action is being done by the submit button. The action equals next page equals. We've got our about panel, just a YUI panel, very simple. Not much in it either. Our main menu, which comes up when you log in, replaces the initial menu, just a YUI menu bar. Um, our uh, select CD view, which, um, sorry, library.ewd is the first one to look at. library.ewd this is our outer tab view panel inside a dialog panel then we've got select CD view our inner tab view panel very simple again that brings up select CD by artist select CD by artist which is just a form inside a fragment which asks for the artist Everything's done by the submit button, next page equals, action equals, whatever. Uh, and the, the results come up uh, in this one, this fragment CD by artist results. And that's a YUI data table. If we look at the Python module, not much to it. Get login menu, uh, get login menu defines the uh, initial login menu as a Python dictionary. Get main menu once we logged in redefines the menu as a new dictionary. Check login validates the username and password then when the user logs in you can see how simple that is. And finally get CD by artist which runs our query against our MDB database and puts the data through this API which creates the JSON data store. And that's it. That's the entire application. Well my view is that uh, in 2010 the days of programmers writing applications in terms of low-level code really should be over. That, 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 that world uh, should no longer exist. The framework that you use should be doing everything it can for you. Anything repetitive, critically important, anything that can be automated should be automated. All the developer really should need to define is the bits that are unique to the particular application that define what the application is attempting to do in as succinct and self-explanatory way as possible. And um, that's certainly been the objective of EWD and I hope this, this series of videos has succeeded in demonstrating this design goal. EWD really is the quickest and simplest and most productive framework available at the moment for building Ajax applications and I hope uh, having watched these videos uh, you now agree. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.